I'll take the blame for most of that. So uh, I don't know. It. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so y'all say y'all don't have any questions, we have uh, I know it's way out there, but I can't remember the date, but we've got like three more weeks at least, I think, till the first test. So we've got time in case any of y'all were like worried about it. So it might be the 13th. That might be the date, something like so. Don't let it bother you yet. Um, Okay, so we ended class last week talking about rational behavior. The assumption and that we're going to be basing most of our conversation around that people are going to act on according to their own best interest. So we're going to be assuming when we sit and talk about, well, if prices go up, are we going to buy more or less? Well, most people are going to, you know, if the price goes up, I can't afford to buy as much, so I'm going to buy less of it, right? If prices go down, we'll buy more of it. If wages go up we're more interested in working if wages go down we're less interested in working because they ain't paying us jack diddly squat right um so we're going to assume that and most economic theories are going to be based on that this is the next one marginal means extra the point of that is coming up on the next two slides but a question on a test Marginal means blank. I promise you that will be a question on the test. Margin. Think about your margins in your paper. What is that? That extra space that you don't write in, right? So marginal, extra, right? Just, just whatever helps. So there you go. But marginal means extra. This is a foundation for a lot of economic thought. This is the difference between economics and accounting. Are any of you accounting people? Ooh, a bunch of y'all. Oh, I'm sorry. Just don't. But in economics, we look at marginal cost, which is your extra cost. What's your extra cost to do something else? And we're going to compare that to what's on the next slide, your extra benefit, your marginal benefit. What is your extra cost for producing an extra item, for taking an extra action, for doing an extra thing? Um, what does it cost you to, what is it costing you to take this class here today? Hmm? Money, what money, how much? Like 300, for those of you that are not on financial aid, it's like $350 worth of tuition. Luckily it's no textbook, but then it's what? Gas money, Gas money twice a week, so. We'll come back to the food for a minute, but gas money a couple days a week to be driving up here So you maybe you're using two three dollars worth of gas every day. So like five six dollars a week So you got 350 in tuition and then another three hundred dollars in gas to be here. Well, what would it cost you if you were to take? Another class right after this one Well, you, you've already spent the gas money, right? That gas money's already come and gone. So it's just gonna cost the extra tuition for the second class. What would it cost a college to add another student to this class? Almost nothing, because the lights are already on, the heater, air conditioner, whatever they've got running is already on, the computer's on, the projector's on, they're already paying me. I'm talking, the microphone's doing its thing, computer's doing its thing. The only thing it costs the college to add another student to this class is a little bit of paper and ink for me to print an extra copy of each of the tests, right? So it may cost the college a dollar to have somebody else join this class. What is the benefit to the college letting somebody else add this class? $350 worth of tuition, right? So if you were a college administrator and somebody else came rolling up and saying they wanted to sign up for my econ class, what are you going to do? Make it happen, right? Because how many of you would spend a dollar in order to make 350? Oh yeah, absolutely. So in that case, if the which is the next slide, if the benefit, the extra benefit of adding the student outweighs the extra cost of adding the extra student, you go ahead and do it. So we, we've got um, okay, like 14, 15 people in here. So if 
we've already got the desks for the next person. That kind of, what would it cost us if we had 20 people in here to add a 21st person in here? Maybe the college staff spend a couple hundred bucks to get another desk because we've run out of desks. Okay, yeah, we can steal one from next door, but, right? But maybe to add the 22nd student might mean we've got to move to another classroom because we're suddenly violating fire marshal rules and that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, we're going to get $200, $300 out of that person. But instead of having the class take place in this classroom, we got to be in a little theater there and there's a whole lot more electricity and air conditioning and all that kind of stuff. Maybe it ain't worth it. Right? So, what you do with marginal analysis is you use this in decision making. And this is the basics of economics here. If you look at your costs and you just, you look at all of the costs, what else is it costing you to take this class besides tuition and gas? Oh, and I, I, I'm supposed to come back to food. It, time. And what, yeah. What could you be doing with your time if you weren't here? Some of you could be working. Luke could be working, making more money so he can buy more heroin, right? <laughs> So guess what? So he, uh, how much money do you make an hour on your job? Feel free to lie. Honestly, if you want to. $5 an hour? That ain't gonna impress the ladies. So how much do you make an hour? Feel free to lie. I just family business. Oh, family business, be lucky you get in the five. Good. <laughs> yeah. Family's harsh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's why he does heroin. Yes, seriously. So, because he's here, he's given up an hour and a half to be in this class, then another 45 minutes worth of driving up and down the road, so he's given, well, let's call it, he's given up two and a half hours a day, five hours a week. That's $25 a week less than he's making. So $350 left his pocket to pay tuition. The gas money's leaving his pocket to go to the gas tank, but then there's other money that's not even going into his pocket in the first place. It's something that we'll actually get to in a slightly later slide. I can't believe I'm here now, but okay. So it's costing him even more. What else is it costing you? Stress, aggravation. You know, there's gonna be that time in a couple of weeks coming up on September the 12th or whatever when your friends, you know, you know they're gonna be going to that concert or they're gonna be going to the hockey game or wherever they're gonna be going and what are you gonna do? You can say, sorry, I can't do it. I've got to stay home and study for tested I got to take in class tomorrow right yeah. so you got to think about all of those costs even the mental the psychological all that kind of stuff you've got to rope up all of those costs and then decide is the benefit worth the cost but also that same hockey game that same concert is going to cost you more money than a ticket yes the, the secret is get buy the cheapest ticket that you can at a hockey game because the hockey games around here don't sell out. So you just buy the cheapest ticket and you sit close to the front. And if somebody says, "Hey, you sit in my seat," oh, I'm sorry, and you get up and you move back and find another empty seat. And then it gets... I'm not speaking for personally. No. <laughs> oh, oh and hold on to your. It, 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 have you got your student ID card? Hold on that sucker as long as you can because you can use it to get student discounts or whatever. I mean, I just hang on to it and try not to change your appearance for a little while, whatever, you know, hold off the gray or whatever you got to do, just, just there you go. Um, anyway. Who can I pick on? I'm gonna be picking on everybody. Either. So, yeah, I wanna say that, Bobby. I want to say David, I knew that was wrong. Bobby, five letters, begins with a consonant. So, Bobby has a girlfriend, right? You go. Good. Bobby has a girlfriend. He gets a certain amount of enjoyment for spending time with her, but it costs him some money to spend time with her. It's, you know, he's a gentleman, whatever, so you know he takes he takes her out to Applebee's on Friday night, and they leave hungry, and so then they got to go get another snack a little bit later because Applebee's portions are too small, and right. It costs him some money. There is the costs to having the girlfriend. There is the benefits for having the girlfriend. But then, somewhere along the line, this other lady walks by and makes eye contact with him. So then Bobby asks the question, how much 
better and more interesting would my life be if I took on a second girlfriend? Not getting rid of the first one, but keeping the first one and bringing on the second one, because I'm enjoying the first one, so hey. What's the extra benefit there? And, but then he needs to consider, well, what are all of the costs involved? Okay, you know, one night I got to take one of them out to Applebee's, the other night I got to take the other one out to Applebee's and hope that, yeah, not enough one. Huh? Two calls. Oh. You going to take them both out at the same time? Every time, and those don't that, say anything. That's okay. That's part of the fear. So, okay, well, we can't go to Applebee's, so I got to find another okay atmosphere to restaurant because I can't take her to McDonald's. Neither of them. Do we have Same Ruby thing. Tuesday right here? Okay, Farmville. So, okay, so he suddenly got to go all the way to Farmville because he doesn't want to get caught. Right. So, what are all of the costs? There's going to be all the stress, all the aggravation, all the I hope I don't get busted, and if I get busted, well, guess what? Not only is the one arm going to be smacking me, but while the one arm smacking me, the other one's going to be poking holes in my tire with a switchblade. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, they're going to be subtle about it. They're going to take the tire and they're going to lean the nail against one, the front of the tire and lean the nail against the back of the tire. So whether you go forward or backwards, you're going to be running over the nail and it's going to puncture your tire. Well, don't ask how I know. Just know that I know. <laughs> Keep on moving. Um, so, somewhere along the line, Bobby is doing all of this math, and he's like, Jill, maybe having two girlfriends would make my life a little bit more interesting than the one. But is the cause thing worth it? Bobby, do you have two girlfriends? No. Guys, are any of you in here having two girlfriends? I'm admitting it now. Okay. And ladies, any of you got a couple guys on the side? Yeah. But this is the kind of decision that we have to make. It's the, these are the decisions we make on everything. The, point, the difference between this and accounting is accounting, we look at averages. What is our average cost for doing what we've already done? That's looking to the past. What is our average revenue from doing what we've already done? That's looking in the past. Where economics is, okay, Bobby already has a girlfriend. What happens if he gets a second one? Luke already is taking a class. What happens if he takes a second one? It's about this is where you are right now. What happens if you go forward? So economics looks forward. Accounting is looking backwards. And that's the difference there. And that's why I talk smack to Tiffany as much as I can about accounting. And I talk smack about accounting and she knows it. We look forward here. Um, what are all of the benefits? What are the costs? You are already here. Bobby already has a girlfriend. So his decision, if I don't know what, Miss Virginia or whatever goes walking down the hallway or something like that, and all the guys' heads turn, and you hear the snapping of all of the necks craning around right, right fast, well, Bobby's decision is a little bit harder than somebody else's. Um, yeah, Tyler, I was going to call it right. Tyler is single. So how easy is it for him to say, hmm, let, let me go chase her down the hallway and hope I don't get caught arrested by the cops who are talking to Frank. It's an easier decision for him. Right. What are all of your extra costs? What are all your extra benefits? The extra benefit for the college, $350. Extra cost of the college, a dollar. They make it happen. How many of you have already had lunch? Okay. Those of you that did not, haven't had lunch yet, you have not had lunch yet. And I'm going to be talking about food for the next hour. And then you leave this class and you walk down to the stack machine and you look at the stack machine and you see that pack of MMs. How good is that pack of m ms looking? How much is it going to cost you? How many of y'all are going to be putting money in that machine to get some m ms especially if I talk about m ms for the next 45 minutes? Okay, those of you that have already had lunch, how many of y'all are going to go down the hallway and buy m ms It's based on where you are, what's going on with you right now. Um, Lovely. m ms are her favorite food. She's not here. I know. M&M's are her favorite food. She loves M&M's better than anything else to say in that machine. But if there's sometimes she goes to that machine and she's going to buy something other than M&M's? Maybe. maybe. Because maybe she's already eaten five packs of M&M's today. And she's like, I've had enough M&M's today, but I'm still hungry. So it doesn't change her love for M&M's, but the benefit she's going to get out of that six pack of M&M's 
doesn't outweigh the cost, so she's going to say, nah, I love you some m ms but not $1.50's worth because I've already eaten five packs today. And she walks away. All right. But there might be something else in there that she does like. Not as much as m ms but at this point, will make her happier than that six pack of m ms would. All right. So our decision making ends up changing, but it's based on where you are today. If she hadn't had anything to eat today, yeah, she's getting a pack of m ms She's had six packs of five packs of M and M's today. She's probably going to find something else, or she's going to be going to the doctor's office after class. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just but. so this is kind of fundamental for us in our decision making, and we do this all the time. And we y'all we don't even know that we do it. Some of y'all are going to make a decision after class. Y'all are going to walk down to the snack machine. Some of y'all are going to walk to the parking lot. Have any of y'all eaten at like a pizza buffet or any kind of food buffet? What does it cost you to go back and refill your plate? Oh, excuse me, get a new plate, right? And fill it. What does it cost you to get a second plate of food, and a third plate of food, and a fourth plate of food? All it costs you is the energy to get up and walk across the restaurant, right? Almost nothing. But what ends up happening? That second plate of food, the first plate of food is when you put all your favorites on there. The second plate of food, you put some of your, more of your favorites on there, and you put some of the other stuff on there. The third plate of food, well, okay, I'll try this, I'll try that, and you leave half of it behind. But then you get to that, what, of the fourth or the fifth plate of food, where you're like, I'm going to get so little enjoyment out of it, it ain't even worth my effort to waddle across the restaurant. Yes. Well, if you've eaten five, six plates of food at a buffet, then waddling is, that, I, I stand by that. So we do this kind of thing all the time. When you make a decision, are you going to get another soda out of the machine, out of your refrigerator at the house? Are you going to play more video games? Are you going to do more studying? What's it going to cost me to do another hour of studying, an hour of my life that I could be doing what? Playing, playing video games, watching a movie, doing heroin, whatever. We're not judging Luke. But what's the benefit? Well, if it's your first hour of studying, you haven't studied at all. One hour studying is going to boost your grade a fair amount, so you do it. That second hour studying might only boost your grade by a couple points, and you say, no. Yeah. Right? We do this decision making all the time. We just maybe don't think of it that way. So, the next thing we have something to keep your eyes for correlation that maybe you've heard of, and a causation that maybe you haven't, but this ain't rocket science. Hopefully, you'll know what it is. Correlation is when two things seem to be happening at the same time, but that doesn't mean that they're related. Causation is when there is a cause and effect relationship between those two things. Correlation, let's see, Matthew, and Haley both came to walk in, in the door of a class at about the same time today. Does that mean that they rode together? Does that mean that they're living in the same neighborhood, riding the same car? No. I mean, they're just a cause and effect of, well, you know, class is starting. But just because two things happen at the same time doesn't mean that they're related, doesn't mean that there's a cause and effect thing. Um, what is it? The, um, there is a, th th this is a real thing. I think it's for you football people. If the, in a present year of a presidential election, if the NFC team in the Super Bowl in February wins the Super Bowl, whoever the incumbent president is is going to get reelected. Most of the time, it just happens to have worked out. If the incumbent president, the incumbent party, you know, it just. You know, like you know, if you know, Barack Obama couldn't get, couldn't run for a third term, so then you know Hillary was there. If the NFC team would have won in 2016, then Hillary would have won the election. There is that theory there. There is evidence that shows this relationship. But do voters really sit there and say, "Well, looks like Philadelphia won this year. I guess we got a vote Republican." No. Two things happen. It just happens to be that most of the years, the, the NFC, that there is a presidential election when the NFC team won in February, it just happened to be that they, whatever, whoever's in office happened to get reelected. That's just coincidence, right? 
There is no connection there. But politicians, lawyers, advertisers, they try to make these connections whether they are or not. They try to make y'all think that these things are real when there may not be a connection there. Causation is when there is a cause and effect relationship for you to look at. Okay, you with me? Okay. Shake your edge sketch for a couple of minutes mentally. And we're going to pretend like you're wearing math class for the rest, for a good chunk of the remainder of today. Because so I'm going to take some of, I wish I had my little button so I could go beep. I'm going to take some of the stuff that y'all talked about in 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade math, even some of the math you're taking here. I'm going to sort of give it to you in English. Okay. There's a reason why they give you that y equals mx plus b. Well, we're going to start, we're going to put it to use here. So, put on your math hat for the next little bit. Whenever you're graphing two related things, if you have two related data sets, you can graph it. Whenever you do that, generally one variable is going to depend on the other variable. Uh, okay. Okay. Like height is dependent on age. The older a kid gets, what happens? They get taller, right? But it doesn't necessarily mean, well, okay, if somebody just grew six inches, that means they just got older overnight. No. It doesn't work that way, right? But there is a relationship there. That one is going to be dependent on the other. Go back to that. And you always put the, and we'll always do this with one exception, and here in this class, the dependent variable is going to be on the left-hand side. The thing is dependent on what happens on the right-hand side. If you were going to do a graph where you were looking at the hours that people study and the grade that they get, your grade is based on how much you study, right? So the grade is going to go over here on the y-axis, and the amount of time studying is going to go down here on the y-axis. X-axis. I said, Cus teaches Sunday school the other day, and I took that John F. Kennedy asked how well you can do for your country, but that's what your country can be tied to down with the backwards. My wife especially gave me a hard time for that one, but anyway. So, generally, when you see things, what, what the thing is depending on the other thing happening is going to be here. Um, Not necessarily the best example here, I guess, for that because mm, they're not completely related, but, to, but height and age for kids. The older that the kid gets, the taller the kid gets. My 13-year-old is taller than my 10-year-old. The five-year-old kid is taller than a two-year-old kid. Right? So as time goes by, kids grow. So, okay, I'm trying to remember what else you can do here. Okay, I'm trying to remember where I was going. So, when, if we were to, you know, so this is just setting the stage for doing a graph, okay? So, when you do a graph, you have those two things that they talked about in, was it geometry class? Slope and y-intercept, right? It, it was geometry or was it algebra? Algebra, okay. I didn't get good grades in there. Your slope, we talk about the slope. The slope, it can go two ways, going uphill or it could go downhill. Uphill is positive, which means when one of them grows, the other one is gonna grow. The more you study, the higher your grade, right? The less you study, the lower your grade. So that is a positive slope. This is not to say positive as far as to pass judgment. This is positive in saying mathematics. If you do that rise over run thing, y'all remember, you can end up with a positive number, not a negative number. If we're talking golf scores, how do you, do you want a high score in golf or low score in golf? You want a low score in golf, right? So you would want a negative slope, but that's a positive thing, right? The more you practice, the lower your score gets, right? So this isn't a value judgment. This is just pure mathematics. Positive slope, you're going uphill. 
Because one of them gets bigger, the other gets bigger. In this case, now we're studying in gray. Negative slope, you're going downhill. Case here is absences in gray. The more days that Allison skips this class, the lower her grade is probably going to turn out on the test. You look like a skipper, you troublemaker. I, I have yet to define, usually in the class I end up, usually in the class I end up with two people with the same name and then I end up determining that one of them is the good of that person and the other is the evil of that person and I haven't, nobody, uh, we don't have that duplicate so I haven't figured out who my evil troublemakers are yet this year, yet, but I'm um, suspicious for the green hair Amanda might be on the list, but I'm just, I'm just scared. <laughs> so negative slope when absences go up grade goes down so you have a negative number there the whole idea here is we're going to be looking at some grass here because the picture's worth a thousand words but don't don't panic don't freak i just want us to wrap our minds around it so the y-intercept that's where that curve if i was to continue back where it touches the y-axis don't remember that but this is what they didn't tell you in high school. That's your starting point for when things start to happen. It's what you would have if you did no action. What would your grade be if you didn't study? What would your grade be if you didn't skip class? In the case of kids and the growth thing, how tall is a kid when they're born? Are they born at zero inches tall? No, they start out at about 18 or 20 inches and then they grow from there, right? Right? That's about right. So that's why it's not necessarily zero. And a lot of times when we were in high school, we're like, well, it, it ought to be zero. Everything starts at zero, right? Did any of y'all have that hang up when you were in high school? It don't make sense that we have a Y intercept at ain't zero. Didn't, was it just me? But just, it's our starting point. How many of you, if I was to right now, Hand out a pop quiz. How many of you would get a zero on it? The star, love the confidence. <laughs> but a lot of you are like, well, I've kind of been awake, I've kind of been paying attention, and like, even a blind squirrel gets nuts. Hey, if it's a multiple choice, I, hey, you know, if I just go C, 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 I ought to get a 25% on it, right? If it's nothing but true and false, I ought to get a 50 unless I'm doing something wrong, right? That's going to kind of be your starting point. What would your grade be if? But then the more you study, your grade is going to go up from there. Some of y'all are just naturally smart. There's going to be some of y'all that will probably end up killing it. And even if the first day of class, if I were to give you a pop quiz, you would have been able to get a 70 or 80 on it, right? You know, maybe sit. And so it's not always zero, but that's just going to be your starting point where things start to happen. And then your, okay. And then your, um, that slope is just gonna be determining where things go from there. If you start out not studying and you just blindly walk in, and what would happen if you blindly walked into class one day and everybody's like, oh, it's test day, and you say, oh, crap, right? And then you take the test. But then even that five minutes that you're studying, you're like, hold on, hold on. Now I'm standing there hovering over your desk with your test. You're like, get out of And then you, you, you get your grade up a few more points, right? But if you actually studied for an hour, your grade would be higher, right? So the amount of studying is going to influence it, but you wouldn't be getting a zero if you came in cold, right? So your y-intercept is just going to start for kids. It started 20 inches, and it's going to go up from there, right? But it doesn't necessarily go at a steady rate. That's okay. We're not gonna, this is where we're going away from the math. We don't, we're not gonna get lost in the math. I'm not gonna make you compute slopes and y-intercepts in class. So any of you that are starting to freak out, this ain't a math bad, you don't look like Brent Reaching. You got too much hair, right? Granted it's gray, but yeah. Um, but I want you to catch them. What's going on here? The slope is fairly steep. What's happening there? It's decreasing slowly. Slowly. 
what's happening here. A small change in time is leading to a big change in height. Junior grows a lot that first year. What's happening out here? There's not that much change. Junior is still growing, but not growing as fast as Junior did the first year that he was on a planet, right? And this, these numbers actually reflect the 50th percentile for boys, in case you're curious. I actually pulled this. This is actually what it looks like. Uh, they boys start out at 20, to about 20 inches tall. Half of the boys are going to be taller than 20 when they're born. Half of them are going to be shorter than 20 when they're born. Uh, but then you have this period. Yeah, fast growth. You have a period not so much growth. And what happens out here when you get to y'all's age? It's, you're flat. You ain't growing anymore, right? Well, I stopped growing, so am I zero inches tall? No. No, you stop growing when you just stay where you are. Then what happens when you start getting up to your 70s and 80s and that kind of stuff? Osteoporosis sets in, your bones start shrinking, that kind of stuff, and you end up being like my grandmother and you look more like a fire plug than anything, right? Just... <laughs> your growth rate changes. The key here is the steeper the slope, the faster the change. The flatter the slope, the less the change. You can have positive slope, you're growing. You can have negative slope, you're shrinking. But we started out 20 inches tall. So, guys, just in case you're curious, how old are you? I'm 19 years old. Um, half of you should oops, half of you should be. Oh, I hate Microsoft. Where did I get out of? The Remember when I said I hate Microsoft? I stand by that. I don't even know what to. Let me erase all that. So, according to this graph here, guys, y'all are like 19 years old. Half of you should be 69 inches or taller. Half of you at this point would be 69 inches or shorter. So I'll have to line y'all up, tallest to shortest. The person in the middle should be at 69 inches, and some of y'all would be taller. Some of you. And that's five foot nine. How many of you five foot ten or taller? One, two, three, four, five of you, five of me, six of you. How many of you are shorter than that? Sam was the only one that didn't raise his hand the first time. I wasn't judging or picking, but okay. So y'all are skewing toward the tall side. We're growing big down here in Southern. Yeah. Give me the name of a person. Mike. This is Mike. Good for you, Mike. In this situation, talk to me about Mike. What's happening with Mike? If he studies. Because he's going to end up studying for a certain amount of time, and when he closes the book, it's going to land him at some point on here. If he studies three hours, that's where he's going to be. If he only studies one hour, this is where he would be. But we can't, we, we do know some things about Mike. First, if he doesn't do any studying at all, what can he expect to get on the test? The 30. The 30. So if you were Mike, what do you need to do? Studying. But what do we see for Mike? If he studies simply one hour, that one hour studying will turn a grade of 30 into a grade of 80. Should he do it? Yeah. But then what do we see for Mike? If he does the second hour studying, That's going to knock his grade up to 88, 90, something like that. Gets eight more points for doing a second hour of studying. Should he do it? Some people say yes, some people say no. It depends on what his goals is. If he's like, well, I'm a transfer student and I just need to get a C, well, I guess he doesn't even really need to do an hour, right? But if he's one of those I need to achieve kind of thing, a little bit like I think Allison is suggesting she is. Allison, what do you, what would you do? She's going to be aiming here. 
Right. No, that's not you. Okay. She lied, lied to me with her eyes. Is that any of you? I, I'm not gonna be happy if I don't get the hundred. Okay, that's some of you that don't <laughs> want to admit it. Either that or I got a whole bunch of lectures in this class. So, this is what we get. We can see Mike, okay, he ain't gonna get a zero, but he ain't gonna do very well without studying. Studying helps Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, teaching out of Chrome instead of teaching out of PowerPoint and act a little bit differently. Okay, give me the name of a, another human being. What? Max. Max. Okay, do we like Max or not? Okay, let's talk about Max. What can we say about Max? In the wrong class, doesn't need to study. Are you get different? What do you mean in the wrong class? No, I mean he uh, he learned everything in class and didn't study. Okay, he learned it all in class. Okay, I misheard you. What we see here is if he does no studying, he's going to get seventy-two. If he does two hours studying, he's going to get seventy-two. If he does four hours studying, he's going to do seventy-two. <laughs> he hit his max. Very funny. I'll give you a point for that. <laughs> so, um, so should Max study? No. Absolute waste of Max's time, right? But Max has, is there anything positive you can say about Max? He's consistent. Well, he's above Mike. <laughs> okay, he's consistent, okay, and he's above Mike, where, at, how, what? At no studying. With no studying whatsoever. Max doesn't have study skills. But that doesn't mean that Max is a dummy. Max coming in with no studying whatsoever, he naturally has more knowledge than Mike does. He naturally knows more, but he can't build on it. Where Max doesn't know as much naturally, but he can improve. We cool with that. Okay, give me the name of another human. Mark. Wow. Seriously. <laughs> Alliteration, anybody? Okay. Oh. Let's talk about Mark. I need to have an intervention. <laughs> something, something wrong with this kid. You're, you're halfway there. The intervention, maybe not, but there's something wrong. He is smart, but apparently. I don't know, easily confused when he starts studying, or he ends up bringing in a bunch of the self-doubt when he starts studying. And if he just kicks back and says, I'm just gonna trust myself and trust my brain and do no study, and he's gonna, he's gonna be just fine. We don't see many marks around here. Do we see Max's here at college? Yes. Um, yes, for the record. This was me as a student at Virginia Tech. It kind of seemed to, it didn't really matter how hard I studied, I'd still get a D plus, C minus, just about every single time. But I had this work ethic that I'm going to keep studying because I had a fear that if I didn't study and then I walked in there, I'd walk out with a 30 or something like that. I struggled as a student. Let's ignore me, which y'all been doing class for 40 minutes. Ignore me, ignore Mike. Which would you rather be? How many of you would rather be Max? Half of you. How many of you would rather be Mike? Half of you. And then there's a couple of you that didn't vote. So, okay. Yeah, it should have been more than that. Get a nice drop for that. No studying. Okay, but I, uh, but I erased Mark. Yes. yes. Mark dropped class. Is there, is there anything wrong with either? Right. Some of you are like, okay, it ain't great, but it ain't bad and I don't have to do much work. That's the max world. But some of you are like, well, I may not be starting out with a lot, but I can achieve more. That's Mike's world. 
Some of y'all are more on the, okay, I would like to achieve more, I would like to do more. There we go. So let me ask you this. If you are hiring, who would you rather hire to work for you, Mike or Max? Heard both, for, for, heard both votes again. I guess part of it depends on what it is you're looking for. It depends on your expectations. If you're the manager of McDonald's and you're only looking for a French fry cook, well, maybe go for Max. A Max like that. But if you're a manager of McDonald's and part of your getting your bonuses and stuff is based on how many people get in the management training program, who's got the better chance of getting into that? With a little bit of time spent with Mike, Mike can make it to the management trainee program and you get that bonus as the manager. Kind of depends on what you're doing, right? Um, in Luke's case, working for the family, Luke's probably oh, just, he's just gonna max out, right? Just because it is what it is, right? That's what happens working for family, yes. Yeah. Hmm? Depends on the family. It, it just depends. Uh, <laughs> it's like, like, how can I complain about my boss? Because my boss is my mama and I love my mom. Right, you get to, 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 there's issues there. Um, here's a relationship for you. Give me the name of the human. Matt. Matt. With one to you, too. <laughs> okay. Matt with the extra team. Yes. Matt T. Okay. So, what can you say about Matt? If he doesn't do any drinking, well, he can manage to do six dates a month. When I was y'all's age, I would have been happy with that, but okay. <laughs> but but what's going on? Hmm? Not necessarily. It depends on where he is. Because he might not drink at all. And he gets to six days a month. He might drink more and get more dates. And he might drink even more and get even more dates. If he turns out to be an alcoholic, because this is where he could be, which is where on this line is he playing right now? So let's talk. So, and this is a normal thing here. Matt? He does. He, he does okay. He gets him a few dates, but maybe he's just he's kind of a little quiet, shy, whatever that kind of thing. So maybe if he you know on Friday night, Saturday night, he takes him in a couple of drinks or something like that to help him loosen up, to help him relax, to help him not be so nervous around the ladies or whatever. He can have a couple of drinks and he'll loosen up and he'll be able to talk to some of those ladies that he otherwise would be intimidated by, and he might end up getting more dates. So he's like, okay, I have a little bit of drink, and I can relax more, and I can talk to ladies, so maybe okay, I'll drink a little bit more, right? But then what ends up happening? If he drinks even more, what's going to happen? He's starting to get a little bit sloppy. Uh, words ain't coming out the way they ought to be coming out, and the ladies are going to be saying, great, eh? and get away from me, you drunk, and then what ends up happening? So then he gets depressed, and he drinks more, and he has no dates with him. This is a normal curve for a lot of people. So what should Matt do? Hmm? Be his own self, let the alcohol go, and he should be playing back here. That is what, what be satisfied with six dates. Just say no to alcohol. What does some of the rest of y'all think? I don't know, six, six dates. Oh, because oh, y'all are young, y'all don't know the alcohol thing yet. Okay, so, yes. But yeah, like I said, when I was y'all's age, six dates, woohoo! That's like six more than I was ever getting in a month, but okay. <laughs> but the answer is, it kind of depends on what his goal is. If his goal is to make him as happy as he can during his time here on Earth, what does he need to do? Find that perfect amount of alcohol that is going to give him the most dates possible for the month. If he drinks less than that, he's going to get less than the most possible dates. If he drinks more than that, he's going to get less than the most possible dates. He needs to find that first perfect amount of alcohol to drink. Good luck with that, right? But this is normal behavior. Let me go back to... If I can get this 
windows shot out of my way. No, this one. What does your studying curve really look like? Doesn't it go down? Because when you've been studying five, six, seven, eight hours, you start getting sleepy, you start getting confused, you ain't adding a whole lot, and you come in to take the test the next morning, and instead of taking the test, you fall over asleep. All right? So what is it that you need to do? Well, we were kind of asking that question. How much studying should you do? If your goal is I want to get the highest grade possible, will you find out where this maxes out, where it maxes out. Where's that highest point, that perfect amount of studying? If I study four hours, I'll get four and a half hours, I'll get a higher grade than in any other amount of studying. If that is your goal. If what's his name's goal was to get the most dates in a month, he's gonna be drinking what was it, 18 drinks a month or whatever the math was. If his goal is something else, but then of course, you know, he maximum benefit, um, marginal benefit, marginal cost, he's gotta look at. How much extra enjoyment is he going to get out of those extra dates? How much extra money is he going to spend on the alcohol and the extra dates and all that kind of stuff? Is it worth it? Just like you ask the, is it worth all the extra time to do that extra hour and a half of studying in order to add four points to your grade? It depends on who you are. It depends on your priorities. And your priorities and my priorities, every one of our priorities is different based on if I can find it fast. This. Bam. We're acting in our own best interest. Some of y'all aren't transfer students. And you're like, well, the only reason why I'm here is because if I wasn't here, then my parents would be making me work more. And they kicked me out of the house. So the only way I could get to stay there and get free rent and free food and all that kind of stuff is by taking classes and I ain't a transfer student. So as long as I pass the college won't get me kick me out. My goal is to get a D. As long as I can beat a 61 on every one of my grades, score. That's the way some of y'all are thinking in here. Some of y'all are like, well, I'm a transfer student, so I need to get a C, so let me get a 71. Score. Or some of y'all are like, well, you know, I want to make the A, B honor roll, so I need to get in and leave, try to average 85 on everything. We all have our different goals, right? So we all have our different behaviors. Some of y'all are gonna just sort of say, crap on it, and I'm gonna rely on, hope, hope that you're, hope I'm a max, and if I don't do any studying, I'll get 70s. And that, and you can be satisfied with that, where some of y'all are gonna be like, well, I know I ain't a max, I need to study. And some of you are like, I know I ain't a max, but I don't care anyway, just as long as the college doesn't kick me out, and then my parents kick me out, right? We all are going to be acting in our own best interest. We're going to be studying how much we're going to study based on what we think is our right decision, based on our values, based on our ethics, based on where we are right now. The number of drinks and the number of dates, that mathematics is a whole lot more different for me than it is for y'all because I've got this ring on my finger, right? If I got to get drunk to talk to my wife, oh, we got some bigger problems, right? And she's the only person I need to be dating, right? Just, yes but we still need to be dating now that we're, even though we're married, right? Keep dating when the marriage, when the ring is over, that doesn't mean you graduate. Right? Keep dating her, I'm just saying. But, you know, the calculus is different for each of us, for what we're doing, what we, you're trying to do. But just mathematically, those graphs are a way that we can look at it to see. So we can mathematically look at this and start making judgments. Who's better student? Who's this? Mike. Um, sitting with an M. Maud. I don't know. I'm running out of M names. Oh, I could have done a Matthew, right? I think. Yeah. Oh, no, that's. Oh, we had a Matt, so okay. I need another M name. Maud. Who's the better student? Maud is obviously. Maud is. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag sarcasm, right? Yeah. Uh, Maud is not the better student. Maud, with no studying, is going to get a lower grade than Mike, and studying doesn't help her. There's no, no nothing that Maud can do to get a grade higher than Mike. So I really probably shouldn't have asked it that way, who's the better student. 
I broke it. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's lock last. Oh boy, I really broke it. Uh, they took talent. Oh, okay. There we are. Who's next? Who's the better student? How do you define student? Uh, that's a di who is a better student is a different question than who is smarter. Who's a better student? Mike can learn more. Maybe that makes him the better student, but Max already knows more. Maybe that makes him smarter. Right. Ooh, deep philosophical there. Give it four more hours though, and he won't be. Yes, give give Mike a few more hours, he won't be. What was the uh mm, uh yep, some players that make it to the NBA and they're just like, I'm here, I'm awesome, I don't have to do anything, I'm just awesome, and there we go. What was the dude? Um 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 was Sam Darnold last year, football player? He did he showed up like the last couple of days of he, he didn't show for any of the preseason. He missed the first week of the season. He still got defensive player of the year. He didn't do the six weeks worth of practicing like all those other teammates did. He just came in and said, boom, I'm here. And he did well. Sam Darnold was more like this. Well, Mike, Mike's behavior. If I took the word Mike and I called him Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan got cut from his high school basketball team. But what did Michael Jordan do? Michael Jordan was down here and he did what? He practiced and 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 he passed everybody. He made it to the high school, the, the high college team. He became the best player at Carolina and he kept going and he got to Chicago Bulls and he was the best player in the NBA for years, years, but he still is the best one there was. Sorry, LeBron fans, but just when you look at what Michael was doing when he was in the league compared to what LeBron was doing when he was in the league. Hmm? Okay. It's okay if we disagree. That's fine. But I, I just, as far as the total impact on the sport, yes. Which would you rather have? The Sam Darnold, I don't have to show up and I'm pretty ding dang darn good, or the Michael Jordan, that I'm going to practice, 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 and then I will be able to eclipse the Sam Darnolds of the world, and through hard work and perseverance, I will be the one that dominates, instead of somebody just relying on their own God given talent and just showing up. That comes back to the who would you rather employ? That's up to you. Are you all with me on all that? I just went through all of that for the, just to get y'all some math stuff, we will, we're going to kind of revisit some of that because I, I want to take those graphs. I'm gonna, that was foundation. When we get to chapter three, I'm going to take those graphs and we're going to take the next step with them. We're going to do some analysis on a couple more people about things to start thinking about their behavior in a little more detail. But we happy with that? So, okay, that ended chapter one, and we are starting chapter two. Trace specialization in trade. I call this chapter two, but this is actually chapter two, and then maybe chapter 17 of the book. It used to be chapter 35 of the book. I've, there's some parallels and stuff, and I'm connecting some dots here, so we're going to have an interesting discussion probably next Tuesday. We're going to take an interesting ride for a little bit. You're going to go, what? And then you realize at the end of things that we've not only covered local business, but we've covered international trade, too. I, I talked about this without talking about this when I was talking about Luke and his job and whatever earlier when we were talking about costs. There's opportunity cost. Anybody want to take a guess what an opportunity cost is? Something that you have to give up in order to get something else. Yeah, it's something you have to give up in order to get something else. It's not the money that you pay in tuition, 
It's what are you not doing? The example that I used for Luke, the example I used for Luke is it's not the money he spent in tuition. This we're talking about the money that didn't go in his checking account because he's here in class. That's what we're going to be shooting for here. What is the sacrifice that you're making? What are you giving up in order to do something else? Because Bobby is dating his girlfriend and is loyal to his girlfriend when whoever it was, Miss USA or whoever this walks down the hallway, he ain't going to go and ask her out. He's giving up the chance to ask out any other woman on the planet because he's choosing to date the girl that he's dating. Right? That's what we're doing. Or if he decided to go hit on Miss USA, by hitting on Miss USA, he is giving up the opportunity to keep dating the girl that he's dating. Because is she going to put up with that? Is she? No. Right? So whenever you're making a decision, whenever you're making a sacrifice, you're giving up other things. Because you're sitting in this noon econ class, you gave up the opportunity to be in Miss Freeman's English class right now. You gave up the opportunity to be in Miss Crystal, uh, Miss Jones, Crystal Jones in her ITE class right now. You gave up doing something else. Because you're driving the car that you're driving, you gave up the opportunity to drive something else. Because you're awake here in class, you gave up the opportunity to be sleeping somewhere else. Right? Because you're watching whatever that TV show is, you gave up the opportunity to watch something else. And I'm not going to pass judgment on any TV show. That's what we're looking for here. It's what are you not doing because you chose to do something else? Any of you buy it? Have, have any of you bought a new car here lately? Sam, what kind of car did you get? Civic. Hmm? Civic. Civic. What color? Um, silver. Silver. Okay. I had one. Not anymore. I have, so he bought the silver Civic. Because he bought the Silver Civic, he gave up on getting a Toyota Camry, right? Because he bought the Civic, he gave the Silver Civic, he gave up on getting the black one. He gave up on getting the red one. He gave up on getting that weird yellow one, right? What is he not driving? He's not driving yellow Civic because he bought the silver one instead, right? Whenever you do something, you are making sacrifices. And so, it, Pure economics, when you're looking at a textbook, we measure the opportunity cost of what is the value of your next best alternative. We're making the assumption, A, that you can measure these things numerically in terms of dollars and cents, and B, we're making the assumption that you're doing the one that pays the most. Y'all don't know the president's got a game. He, he, he had two job offers when he took the job that he has now. He had two job offers. One of them was going to pay him $20 an hour, and the other one was going to pay him $18 an hour. Which one did he take? Hopefully the, the one that was paying him $20 an hour. So what did he do? He gave up the opportunity to have that $18 an hour job. So that decision was worth what? $2 an hour when you made a choice to do the one job versus the other. He's got this $18 opportunity cost. You're working where you, feel free to lie, where you work? Nowhere. Feel, lie. McDonald's. In South Hill? Where? Sure, South Hill. Okay. okay, he's working at South Hill McDonald's making $20 an hour, so apparently he's got some good blackmail information on the manager, right? Okay, so somebody at Burger King in Colonial Heights calls him up and says, we'll pay you 21. Should he do it? No. He would be giving up a $20 job in order to get a $21 job, right? So it's only $1 difference there. So he can't be saying, let's see, $21 an hour times 40 hours a week, that's how, no. The math is, about, he's only going to get an extra $40 a week if they work in 40 hours instead of 29, right? So he's only going to get an extra $29 a week, right? Mm -hmm. By working to clone. So then he asks, see, what, uh, what is the extra? extra anything involved with working there instead of staying where he's at. He's going to give up the gas to drive to Colonial Heights and back. He's going to give up time because he's going to be riding back and forth for 45 minutes, an hour each way. That's an extra hour and a half's worth of driving each day that he's there. 
that he's giving up seniority because he was like, he's got several years worth of experience. So if he asks off Christmas Eve, he's got time there and he's going to get him. But now he's going to be low man on a totem pole up there in Colonial Heights. And he's going to be the first one to get fired if things go sideways, right? So he's giving all of that up just to make the one extra dollar. Not to make $21, to make $1. That's the thinking that we have to think about when we're thinking about stuff, is what all are we giving up? Luke isn't just giving up $350 worth of tuition to be in this class and $5 a day worth of gas to be in this class. He's also giving up $25 a week worth of money not coming in this pocket. Multiply that by 16 weeks a semester, that's $400. So for some of y'all, it's only costing $350 to take this class. It's really costing Luke about $1,000 to take this class. How seriously should he take it? He ought to take it seriously because it's costing a thousand bucks. Where um, Amanda? Where Amanda? I apologize, but I don't know. But Amanda's on financial aid and she's got a scholarship, so she ain't got to buy books. She didn't have to pay tuition, and she rides with friends, so she doesn't have to pay anything to be here. And she's okay going into the faculty lounge and stealing lunch out of the refrigerator in there. So it costs her absolutely nothing. And she doesn't have a job. So what's it costing her to take this class? Nothing. What is she giving up? What would you be doing if you weren't here? Well, you know, y'all don't. She doesn't have friends. She doesn't have family. She doesn't have hobbies. She doesn't have interests. So all she would be doing if she wasn't here would be sleeping. So all she is giving up is sleep to take this class. It's costing her nothing but a little bit of sleep to be here, where for Luke, it's costing him $1,000 to be here. Different calculus there. How seriously is she gonna take this class? Maybe she will, maybe she won't, because she, she's just whatever. But for him, it's $1,000. He needs to take it serious. It's $1,000 for this class, multiply that by the other four classes he's taking this semester, that's $5,000. Two semesters, he's well on his way to buying Sam Civic from him, right? You got to think of the non-financial. Not only is it costing Luke a thousand dollars, it's costing him the stress, the aggravation. Of, oh, oh crap! Do we have a test today? And the couple hours that he should be spending at home studying for the test, the missing out on going to the concert with his friends because they're going to the concert, he's sitting at home studying. The getting the nagging from his girlfriend because she's like, "He never do anything with me anymore. You're all the time sitting there studying that economics, right? All that stress. Oh, she doesn't talk like that, does she?" You don't know, okay, good. So he just doesn't listen to his girlfriend, nice, okay, nice. He's on heroin, doesn't listen to his girlfriend. Ladies, I'm talking, there's your cash right there. I'm just, okay, he's turning that shape right now. Score, okay. Don't worry, some of the rest of y'all, it just happens to be, he's the target at the moment, the rest of y'all, your time is coming. Hey, Lee, I think you're pretty close to this. You gotta think about all those non-financial things too. You gotta think about all the stress, all the aggravation, all that kind of stuff. So, you don't see this in textbook, but I talk about it. You have direct costs, the money that leaves your pocket, and then the opportunity costs. For taking this class, those direct costs would be that $350 worth of tuition. The books, thank the Lord I didn't make you spend the $200 on that, right? Mm -hmm. Gas. But this is only the, and I'm going to come back to Bobby's comment about food an hour ago. I haven't forgotten you. It's costing you tuition, books, gas. But some of you are giving up weight, like Luke, are giving up wages because he's having to knock off of work to come here. Some of you giving up quality time with your family, friends, and you got kids. Okay. You have kids, so what are you not doing right now? You're not spending time with the kids, right? That's kind of important. You're not spending time with your friends when they're going to the concert because you're sitting at home studying quality time, or y'all could be sitting at home right now doing watch, I don't know, Judge Judy, whatever's on TV right now. So I'm doing you a favor, right? Yeah. But when I was asking what what is it costing you to take this class, Bobby said food. And I told him not necessarily. Could if you were not taking this class, would you still eat? Yeah, you still would eat lunch. So food doesn't necessarily count. This is the extra gas. 
but you're already going to eat. But here's the question. Is there a difference between the amount of money it's going to cost you to eat food because you're here versus the amount of money to eat food if you're home? If you're home, you're going to be eating that bologna sandwich that's going to cost 35 cents. But you sure aren't. You don't. You ain't going to pack the bologna sandwich and bring it here, so you're going to go and spend $6 in the food court here for those three chicken tenders. All right. So in that case, the difference between the 35 cents you would have spent and the $6 that you did spend, yeah, that one would fall in as a direct cost. But if you were either going to eat that bologna sandwich at home or eat that bologna sandwich here, the fact that you're eating lunch, that would not be a cost of going to college. Does that make sense to you? That's why I was like, if you take a, walking, an accounting class right after this, well, it's no extra gas because you've already spent the gas. You already were, you already were going to drive in anyway, right? You were driving in for my class, so it doesn't cost for that class. So money that doesn't go in your pocket, wages, quality time, keeping, that's stuff that doesn't go in your pocket. That's kind of a way to think about things. Go with me. So, we have this idea of production possibilities, and I'm going to, to, to make this as simple as humanly possible. Let's just assume there's only two things that you can make. So we're gonna counterpoint the two. So that way we can think about it without getting into confusion of knowing that there's thousands and thousands and thousands of things out there that you can produce, if you produce it. So, production possibilities would be showing the different combinations of products or services that you could produce in a given time period with all the available resources and technology. Hopefully you'll understand this in a few minutes and you won't have to give, write down this definition because it's true but a little bit much. Did somebody just say something? Okay. Make sure I'm not hallucinating. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a graph. Enjoy the ride. If you, we need to come back, we'll come back to this one here. But what we're doing here is going to be looking at two things. Number one that we talked about the other day, everything is limited. We have a scarce amount of time, money, intelligence, tools, equipment, whatever. And then the whole opportunity cost sacrifice thing. Because you're doing one thing, you're not doing another. If you're a corn farmer and you got corn in the field, you ain't also planting tobacco in that same field, right? You only either got one or the other. If you chose to grow corn, you chose not to grow tobacco. You chose to grow tobacco, you chose not to grow corn, right? So, the simplest example we have here is this is a look at time in a day. We have a limit to how much time we have in a day, and what is it? 24 hours. So, Haley, congratulations. Get your stuff on. No. Haley has options. Haley could decide, I'm going to be awake 24 hours, marathon. So she decides to be awake for 24 hours today, how much sleep is she gonna get? Zero. Zero. If Haley decided, yeah. I'm going to only be awake 12 hours today, how much sleep is she gonna get? Well, if she decides, well, I'm gonna be awake eight hours a day. She's like, that's about right. No. So then how much time would she be asleep? 16. 16. If she was awake 16 hours of the day, She'd only sleep eight hours a day. If she was to not get any sleep whatsoever, she'd be awake, I mean sleep all 24 hours. Those are her options. Uh, and we could start nitpicking down to the, oh, what if she's awake 23 hours and 56 minutes, then she's asleep for four minutes? What if she, uh, just, uh, let's keep it simple, right? And that's why we end up doing a curve because we can draw a line in this case and it will just show all of those possible combinations and it'll keep us from starting to bleed from the eyeballs, okay? A picture's worth a thousand words. But this is it. Can she do, can she do this? I'm going to be awake eight hours today and I'm going to be asleep eight hours a day. What happens to the other eight hours? You either awake or asleep, right? Which could be like Luke and Stone, and uh, is it? But you, know, but you still. <laughs> Sorry, Luke. He's like, I thought I was just done with me. You can't be eight and eight because there's another eight hours ahead and uh, accounted for. Because even stoned, he's still awake or awake. I mean, awake or asleep. Right? <laughs> well, if it's speed, then yeah, awake or awake. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Can she do 30 and 20 in the same day? No, you can't do 50 hours worth of whatever in a 24 hour time period, right? So you have these combinations, that these are all the combinations that you have to work with. They gotta add up to 24 hours because that's all you have to work with is 24 hours. You gotta use up all 24 hours of the day, you're either gonna be asleep or awake, and it's only 24 hours of the day. So we can graph these. We can graph this, and what do we get? We get a line that looks like this. 24 hours awake and then asleep. 24 hours asleep and then awake. Eight hours asleep, 16 hours awake. 12 hours awake, 12 hours asleep. 23 and a half hours awake, a half hour asleep. All right, we can graph this. She can't be out here somewhere. She can't do 50 hours worth of whatever in a 24 hour day. And she can't be down here somewhere. When it comes to the possibilities of how Haley is going to spend her day, how she's going to spend her day is going to be found somewhere on this line. Well, that's my job, Tracy. Right? So, Haley, let's just think about yesterday. How long do you think you were awake yesterday? Oh, I'm embarrassed because I slept in like a big dog and I was great. Day. You were awake 11 hours. Oh, you woke up at 11 and then you went to bed before midnight? Ah, uh, to be young. <laughs> we need to lend her our kids for just, just a day. That's all it'll take. Him break. Her. Good. So, okay, so, let's just, so she was somewhere right here. Maybe she went to bed at 10 o'clock. So she was asleep 13 hours of the day, which means. She was awake for only 11, right? That just happens to be, this is where Haley was. This is how Haley spent her day. Lestara, you have kids. What time did you get up yesterday morning? Way too early, right? Three in the morning? And what time did you go to bed last night? Oh, you have my permission to take a few minute nap right now. So she was like, two hours? That's where the star was. She only got like three hours worth of sleep yesterday. Tell me you slept until right before you came here for this class. Please tell me. No, 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 you just got kids and she had to set, bundle them up and get them out the door this morning. Oh, dude. Oh. This is where we are. We're gonna need y'all down here somewhere like this. Anyway, yeah. Th th these are the these are the possibilities that we have to come up with. This is the way production possibilities are to look. If you regret it, this picture's worth a thousand words. In reality, it ain't gonna be a straight line. In reality, when you're actually doing something, it's gonna be kind of curved. And I use this example here of well, let's plant some corn and let's plant some wheat. Because if you were gonna plant If you, you, this is, right now, you did nothing but corn, right? Nothing but corn, a little bit of wheat. I mean, no wheat whatsoever. If you, and now this graph isn't set up for me to tell you that. So if we were to graph this, we would end up with a curve that looks like this. These are the combinations. We could have done nothing but corn. If we do nothing but corn, we get 500 bushels. Corn. If we do nothing but wheat, we get a thousand bushels of wheat. But we could give up a little bit of wheat and get some corn. We could give up a little bit more wheat. Let me check the for those y'all following along. We could give up a little bit more wheat to get a little bit more corn. But what happens down here? We ain't using anywhere near our farmland that we have available to us. Is that a good thing? No, because if you're a farmer, what do you need to do? Because much out of that investment of your tractor and your truck and that kind of stuff is humanly possible. Okay. Can you go out here? Your neighbors wouldn't appreciate you planting weed in their backyard, right? 
So we make the assumption you're going to use all that you have available to you and you're only going to use what is available to you. So you're going to be playing somewhere on this line and this curve is going to look like this. So I'm going to come back to this curve next time. Ooh, I don't have it on there. Oh, uh, well, I lost the slide. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, here's an example for you. Haley, yeah, sorry, back to you. Haley has 10 acres in her backyard. And she can either grow tomatoes or watermelons, and we're going to assume she, she can't mix the two. So she could grow 10 acres of tomatoes and no art. No watermelon, she could grow 10 acres with watermelons and no tomatoes. She could do five and five, four and six, seven and three, two and eight, right? She could do any of those nominations. So what happens here is A, those are any of those points on the line. She's using all 10 of her acres. Down here in B, that is going to be inefficient. She's got 10 acres, but she only plants seven of them. The three of them are just sitting there not getting used. Out here, she's trying to plant in her neighbor's yard, and the neighbor won't appreciate that very well. Unless they get something out of it, yes. So, when looking at that curve there, point A, somewhere on the curve, you're being efficient. Haley is being efficient. She's using all 10 of her acres. If she was inside the line like that point B was, she maybe is only using seven out of her 10 acres. That ain't very efficient. That's inefficient. Outside the curve, point C, that's impossible because she's trying to do 20 acres worth of growing on a 10 acre farm. It didn't work very well, right? Neighbors won't appreciate that very well, right? So I'm going to say that there's a 92% chance that on the test, there will be this a line that looks like this. And I'm going to ask you to label those three points. And I'm going to be looking for efficient, inefficient, impossible. In, in wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Question on study guide. I'm willing to bet. Go with me. It's how you do in a study. What? You in a study guide, right? Yeah, it's on um, Blackboard. They all should be, yeah, should have links to every one of them out there in Blackboard. So we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit more about these two when we come in here Thursday and then we're going to go forward from here and then we're going to go out of Haley's backyard and we're going to take ourselves a little trip. Any questions? Any other questions? Okay, well, drive safe and see you Thursday and just say no to drugs. It ends at like 120. Yeah, no, no it starts at 12. I mean, it's bad enough everybody being in here for an hour and a half, but